If you've started consuming self-improvement content, but you can't seem to break through the bad habits, the chaotic routine, and the negative self-image, it's most likely because your environment is limiting your transformation. I know that plays too well. You're reading books, you're watching self-help content, trying to start going to the gym, you're trying to spend less time on social media, but it's extremely difficult and you find yourself relapsing in old patterns, leaving you more demoralized than, than before. And switching environment is the single best decision that I've made to help me get to the next level. Because the problem if you don't is that your potential is capped from the beginning. You can't fully actualize yourself in an environment that leads you to old and unhealthy patterns. An environment where everyone has a preconceived notion of who you are and where your everyday life is dictated by a series of conditioned behaviors. So if you're trying to change, understanding how and why your environment limits your self-improvement is crucial. So there are three types of environments, physical, social, and digital. You have to know that all these environments, they have a direct influence over the way you act, think, react, feel, everything and we're going to start by talking about the physical environment you're surrounded by because you're so used to it you may not even realize the power it has over you from the cluttered desk to the apps that are installed on your phone your immediate environment is constantly sending cues to your brain and depending on the way you've been conditioned your brain will respond to these cues by triggering learned automatic behavior responses a clear example of that is notifications i remember that each time that i received a notification i had to stop everything to pick up my phone and see what that was all about most of the time i wasn't even consciously doing it and that's how i'd lose myself in this reflex and i just ended up scrolling for like 20 minutes just because of one email notification about a summer sale that H&M was launching that I couldn't care less about honestly but this type of reaction is so anchored in your functioning that it's very hard to break that being said you really want an H&M email to be the reason why you don't launch your business probably not and the combination of these little automatic reactions and actions are putting you into a state of limited consciousness you're basically just responding to every stimulation your environment is throwing at you without consciously choosing to engage in them. That's your autopilot mode. You're like a, a zombie without a brain, basically. You just click on things using only your eyes and ears to process the information. And in that state, you actually use very few thinking abilities, also known as high executive level functions, if you want to flex your neuroscience knowledge. But this happens every day in many scenarios. When you drive to work or when you take the bus to go to school, when you cook, you're on autopilot. When you watch TV and Netflix shows, most of the time you're on autopilot. Except when you watch detailed videos that require you to actively process the information, such as this one made by yours truly. The problem is not the autopilot mode because it helps you save a lot of precious energy. The problem is that if you live your whole life on autopilot, it's just like a bad dream. The main problem remains, as long as you keep repeating in the same behaviors, in the same environment, you end up endlessly in autopilot mode, leaving very little opportunity for your brain to adapt and to initiate any significant change. So the major challenge is finding a way to disengage those reactions and those little habits that are crystallized in your life right now. And trust me, I tried a lot of different things, but the most effective by far is attacking the problem at its core. And that's when I started to understand the power of changing my environment. Now, the second thing, and that's not fair, but your environment knows exactly how your brain works and how to exploit its weaknesses to get the best out of it. Because even if you don't have to grow eggplants in your yard in order to be able to feed your family modern society has had it a level of difficulty it erased the boundary between social and digital environments before social media you didn't have access to the lives of the people that you'd never met your social environment consisted in simply the people that were present in your life those you interacted with and talked to basically on a daily basis. Now, a significant part of the problem is due to this new digital environment. Essentially, this environment gives you access to the lives of people all around the planet. And your brain, poor of him, wasn't designed to be exposed to so much information and so much social connections at once. So truly think about that for a moment. In one day, scrolling on social media, you've been exposed to more people and to more social potential connections that your ancestors were throughout their whole life. Because in a digital world where there's no physical restriction, social connections are almost 
infinite. This isn't really good. This is way too much exposure and your brain cannot make the difference between social and digital anymore. And younger, I remember that I would listen to YouTubers and people online so much so that I would end up thinking that they were some kind of like friends. Meanwhile, they, they didn't know I existed. The thing is that if you're a person that struggles with self-image and low self-esteem, displaying millions of possible social comparisons right in front of you is your kryptonite. Think about how confusing that might be for your brain that was just designed to function well in a tribal environment because at the end of the day your social environment the people you interact with is supposed to be immediate you're supposed to see in real life the people you interact with frequently now if you just add in on top of this digital environment all the automatic responses that we talked about earlier you have a recipe for social anxiety and that's what i experienced for example when i started going to the gym i saw all of these fitness influencers online with the ideal physiques and I slowly conditioned my brain into thinking that that was somehow how it was supposed to look like in a couple months. Let me take you through it. You go on social media, you see these aesthetic physiques everywhere and you, your brain slowly starts to think that it's normal because that's pretty much all you see. Your brain will adapt its perception of a normal human body to what you see and then you're convinced that their physique is the standard and now you look at yourself in the mirror and that's when you potentially develop limiting belief and low self-esteem because you've set it up perfectly for yourself to feel inferior. This is probably going to discourage you from engaging as the barrier to entry will be perceived as just way too high. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have an aesthetic physique. Uh, you should, but for that to happen, we need to get rid of all the potential obstacles that you might encounter along the way. And that's the first thing I see with my clients. A lot of time, digital comparison can actually be one of the biggest limiting factor in your progress when starting. That's why changing your digital environment can be so liberating. Think about this. Instead of scrolling and seeing perfect bodies all the time, what about seeing people that are just like you, that are on the same exact journey that you're on, people that are starting to go to the gym, people that just want to become the best version of themselves. And when you start, I can tell you for sure that finding these people is extremely hard. That's exactly why I've built my community. First link in the description. Now, why does it work that way? And that's a great question. Picture it like this. Your brain is essentially a super intelligent computer that is connected to a battery. The brain, because the energy is finite, doesn't want to use its energy. It wants to keep it for when really necessary. The problem with that is that in a comfortable and known environment, your brain will never have to unlock its energy as every task can just be done on autopilot because you know your environment so well. This is exactly the problem I was facing back then. And I believe a lot of you watching may face as well because modern life is straightforward and predictable you don't have to use your brain to its full capacity and when i say straightforward it's because of the drawn path so you're born you go to school you get a job you make money you marry the girl buy the house get the mortgage well the mortgage and then the house the linear aspect of it is a problem because it's been chosen for you not that there's anything wrong with it it's just like you have to choose for yourself whether you want those things or not. Because if you stay in the same exact environment that you're in, exposing yourself to the same cues, the same people, same emotional patterns, same stories, same buildings, same roads, same trees, same house over and over again, your brain will stop learning because it simply doesn't have to anymore. You know all your surroundings, you know all the people, you know all the places. Why should your brain have to change? Why should you bother? Remember one thing, and that's your brain has been designed for survival and adaptation, not for living the same day over and over again. And when I understood that at that moment, I realized that if I wanted to keep progressing, the key was to force their learning process. Let me explain. Because of its power saving mode, I had to put my brain in a new situation when learning was required and not optional. Consider this as a game. There are levels to this game, and the goal is obviously to climb the ladder and to try to become the best character, to acquire all the traits, and you get through the levels with experience points. The thing is that at every level, the game will try to keep you where you are right now and prevent you from boosting experience going through the next levels, as you can just easily keep slaying the same monsters over and over again in your current level where you're comfortable. The key here is just to not never stop learning or you're just 
end up like a zombie living a life on autopilot and for that always put yourself in new situation where you consciously activate your thinking now when it comes to your physical environment i don't think there's a way around changing your environment you just have to switch location think about this that's why people love to go on vacation so much they take a break and they take the plane and they go somewhere else where the cues that usually activate stress aren't present anymore they can finally be more present and feel more relaxed now me changing environment was pretty extreme as i switched continents but i don't think that it needs to be that extreme for you in order to work to be honest i do think you have to change your micro environment a little bit and that depends on the automatic behaviors that you want to get rid of because i'd say that if you truly want to reinvent yourself and start from zero changing cities is just the minimum and a lot of the big heads of self-improvement have changed their physical environment to start their new business or their new life so you have alex or Mosey who drove to the other side of the us you also have mark Manson who went to live in south america and then yours truly who flew to canada because it's just so hard to not answer to a programmed behavior for instance if you're someone that smokes a lot and you want to quit in your current environment right now every street that you're surrounded by reminds your brain of that one time where you you smoke there every part that you sit in reminds you of that inhale and every inch of your balcony will quadruple that effect now what if you were to physically leave this environment and go somewhere you have no established behavior responses wouldn't it be so much easier to stop smoking then and that's why the first step to reinvention is to free yourself from the old environment you grow bad habits in now if you think that the problem is your current social circle as it just doesn't allow you to become the best version of yourself then it may also be time to change that one thing to be said just because you've lived experiences with people doesn't mean that you're tied on to them for the rest of your life again i'm not saying that you should get rid of all your friends and move in the mountains what i'm saying is that sometimes you may feel it inside that you don't really belong where you are right now that you're engaging in activities that don't make you feel proud of yourself and that you're simply doing this because it's social and that's how it's supposed to be and if you're in that environment then listen to yourself don't do something just because people seem to enjoy it especially when it comes to unhealthy or dangerous behaviors because if you keep acting regardless of how you feel just because of social pressure you will just end up living the life of someone else and here's a perspective that helped me tremendously when i was in that situation maybe you were with people for a moment to just share experiences and then to move on maybe finding your best friends is harder than what the TV show from the 90s make it look like. And it doesn't have to be so dramatic. Explore, try, go talk to people that have interests that align with yours. I've underestimated the power of my social environment for years and the potential negative impact that it had over me. Don't do the same, don't regret, don't dwell, don't blame, just move on. Now in terms of digital, what really worked for me is what Cal Newport calls digital minimalism it's very straightforward the less digital and the less especially social media i use the more room i have for self-improvement but there you reach a paradoxical limit of self-improvement because more doesn't always equal better sometimes most of the time watching one video is way better than binge watching them and it might sound silly laid out like this but in my mind at the time i thought that if i was to watch a hundred thousand hours of self-improvement content then i would become a self-improved person <laughs> i just ended up feeling more overwhelmed and anxious and lost about the whole process no i'm just convinced that the best thing to do is just to limit overall digital exposure and i went from consuming hours of social media content per day to 30 minutes to an hour nowadays and to be honest i wish i had done that earlier because when you limit the exposure you limit the triggers and when you limit those triggers, then your brain isn't in social comparison mode all the time anymore. You need to work on your mind and the way you're thinking. You have to be aware of these thoughts and observe them as they arise. Because once you understand how your mind works, 
once you have the manual of your brain, everything is far easier as you just navigate more smoothly in life. And that ties back to the first point that I made. You have to create enough space for yourself. You gotta get rid of all the distractions and the potential trigger that will only take you back to the version of yourself you're trying to leave behind. Don't act in a rush, let the seed grow and think about who you could be if you were to design the perfect environment for yourself. I hope this helps. Try the process.